All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to On the Edge of Entertainment, where I get to invite my friends from all around the world in Las Vegas. Today, we have Antonio McKay from Los Angeles, who is the star of Sangra Negra. He's going to tell you ah. all about that. I'm really excited to, to hear about that. And I'm so proud that this is happening for you in your life. So, hey, how's it going? Good, darling. How are you? I am good. I know I see that uh, you're behind the scenes, you know, you're just kind of chilling at your house and uh, yeah. and I mean, you're taking this COVID vacation. Yeah, to, yeah taking this time <laughs> to uh, to talk to us. Um, you are mm-hmm. an actor. You and I had actually done um, singing together. So you're also a singer. You're a dancer. You're a performer. Yeah. But, you know, you come from L.A., which I do as well. And so mm-hmm. one of the big things that you do when you live in L.A. is is you're an actor if you're if you're lucky. And um, you've had a lot of success at that. Um, Tell us about some of the cool things you've done. Well, yeah, I started off um, when I first got to L.A. from Chicago. I did a lot of plays in Chicago. Um, The TV shows that went over there, they really never offered me opportunity to get the lead roles because the lead roles were always cast in Los Angeles. So then Mm. when they get to the uh, like Chicago, they would cast all the smaller roles, you know. So if you wanted to actually do it, you had to move to L.A. So that's what got me. Big wine in LA. Yeah. I, well, you know yeah. what? I, I just heard mm-hmm. 135,000 people have left LA. I don't know if it's COVID related <laughs> because they're like, hey, that was my dream. And like yeah. you came to Los Angeles years ago, maybe they mm-hmm. went home. So maybe there'll be less yeah. competition there for you. <laughs> yeah. Some people did. And it's, uh, I can't really blame them. It's not an easy road. No, and it's I always not. Tell, I always tell people if you're going to get into Um, acting or actually any form of show business unless there is some unless there is nothing else you can see yourself doing like if there's anything else you think you'll be happy doing I would advise them to do it no wait a minute Um, this is this is an inspiring (laughs) entertainment uh, web series (laughs) (laughs) but no but Listen, knowing the truth is important also. And um, being an actor is one of the most challenging things. I mean, like you were even telling me the other day about how, um, you know, just if your look is in, then you make it, you know, you might make it. And if your look is out, then where do you fit in? You know, these are weird things that that people don't know. Yeah, because you really have no control about what's going to happen. You you really don't. It's, It's one of the the things about this industry that you have to overcome is the idea that you are being judged by someone else who doesn't know anything about you, but what you put in front of them during the audition. So, you know, you can go into an office and say, Hey, I've got these lines down. You can give the best performance in the world. You can like, man, this is killing it. And the casting director may have just broke up with her boyfriend who looked just like yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to see anything that reminds me of this guy. So I'm not going to pick this guy. That, it, it's that random. Um, you know, it's that random. It is. Tell me a really cool story about how you got in with like a really big agency and um, what the parameters are around that and how, you know, how you got in and also mm-hmm. how it either helped you or hindered you. Right. Um, yeah. I got in with, um, um, the agency Endeavor, which is now William Morris Endeavor. They're now probably the biggest agency in in North America, for sure. And that's that's um, a feat on its own to be able to get yeah. into a big agency. And whether or not that's good or bad, it's like you're with a big agency, yeah. so it makes you look like a big actor, but it also a gives you a lot of competition, right? Yes, because I got in on the, um, what they call the hip pocket of a of a a girl I was going out with, I I won't mention her name, but she's, she's fairly well known now. Okay. She was well known then. 
Anyway, I got in because of her, and then they basically what they call package you. So anything like if they wanted, say, say somebody wants um, maybe Brad Pitt for a role, right? They say, okay, mm -hmm. you have Brad Pitt, but you got to take Tony McKay to put in this role, mm -hmm. okay? And then we'll give you Brad. And that's mm -hmm. basically how they package people. And the good thing is it gets you in front of um, producers and the heads of the networks and the heads of um, the executives. Whereas if you were just with a regular agent, you would have to go through the auditioning process and this and that. I got yeah. to bypass a lot of that stuff and just got, you know, the only person I would have to impress would be the, maybe the producer. And then, you wow. know, that's just, you know, so that was the big help with that. Wow. The, the, the downside of it is, of course, if you're not the main person that they're concentrating on, you never get a chance to go after some roles that you think, well, I could do this, but they're not going to put you up for it if they can put um, Will Smith up for it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. It's Will Smith's role is not, you know, so that kind of thing, you know, you get a back and forth. I would say it's better to be with that kind of agency than not, no matter what. The, yeah. the positives outweigh the negatives. Um, and it did get me, like I said, it got me a couple of roles that I probably would not have gotten if I just had an ordinary agent and had to go through the audition process. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you've done some great things. I guess you had a, um, a TV series in Toronto. Yes. Yeah. It was called Catwalk. It was kind of a, it was a weird how I went to Toronto. I went to Toronto as um, basically I, I was, I was following a girl. I hate to be. <laughs> What's up with you and all these girls? <laughs> just honest about it, yeah. I was following her. I actually, I actually um, got married to her because that's another whole story. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. but it was also when I had started doing um, impersonations, which you know quite a bit about. Yeah. And, and um, I wound up um, working in a show in Canada that was already established in Los Angeles. It was a show called Evening at Lacage, which was yeah. supposed which, to be a drag show, but they did have Prince and Michael Jackson. They, First had, Michael Jackson. they had a couple of real, so, so, the, so the men are playing women. So they wanted to also have men, yep. I'm men sure. Playing yeah. men. And, and they, of course, Prince and Michael were men who <laughs> wore almost as much, if not more makeup than the women. So there was a perfect right. match. Yeah, so, no, I've seen a lot of those shows, um, mm -hmm. you know, in my time. I First of all, I love the Lacage shows. They're just, mm -hmm. they're really amazing performers, you know, and so to, to be a part of that cast is amazing. Yeah, I learned a lot from them, believe me. Yeah, I bet, I bet. So while I was there, I got to audition for Canadian television shows. And ironically, because of the stuff I had done in LA, I got like, basically the endeavor of Canada as my agent. It was like the same thing. So I wound up in the biggest agency in Canada. Awesome. The difference was, of course, because the competition is less, now I got to do the lead roles that I wanted to get in LA. So it was a winning situation for me. That's kind I of what happened to me in Las Vegas. You know, I started mm -hmm. out in Los Angeles Mm -hmm. And I moved here to Las Vegas from Los Angeles, where I grew up acting and I was in SAG and I knew what it was like to have the right promo pictures and things like this. I came to Vegas and I was like a big fish in a small pond at the time. You know, now it's right. now it's a little harder to get into. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's nice to come from somewhere and have something to offer. Right. Exactly. And what happened was they were looking for a. a show where they it was basically like 21 jump street except we were musicians we were like in a band a rock band cool. but we were also working for the cops you know but we looked like rock and rollers and that time you know my hair was like really long and i had again that whole look thing came about because they wanted somebody who resembled the um prince i you know for that particular role oh wow they had another guy, they had another guy who looked like um 
uh, what's his name? Billy Idol, and they had another, mm-hmm. they had a girl that looked kind of like Madonna. You know, it oh, was, yeah. it was, just, we were trying to do a kind of a, you know, MTV, like at Miami Vice had MTV cops. So we were kind of the MTV. I could totally see like, that. Yeah. We kind of same thing. So it was really great, except it only lasted 13 episodes. <laughs> hey man, but, just for you to get into a, uh, a, a pilot or a series mm-hmm. is, is an amazing feat in Los Angeles. I mean, yeah. Um, I was there for years and, you know, I was starving. I mean, granted, I did a lot of cool jobs. I was, mm-hmm. I did some soap operas. I was, I did a lot of big commercials and things, but you know, still it's, it doesn't, you know, pay the rent, right. um, especially in a place like Los Angeles. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you've had a ton of experiences and, and because of your look also, you, you, I'm sure there was a time when you just were getting all kinds of work, just a lot of different work. Oh yeah, it was like, um, like I always say when um, somebody, it's funny when people go in my car and they listen to my music, 99% of my music, I had somebody tell me, why is everybody on your, um, on your playlist dead? Oh no, <laughs> Michael you must Jackson. have young, young people in your car. <laughs> like, well, sorry, you know, that's the music I like, you know, go ahead. And yeah. also, um, what kept me alive, like you say, in the downtime of acting was uh, my resemblance to Prince and later on Michael Jackson. It, it, that's what kept me alive. I could do shows like you in Vegas. I did stuff all, all over the world. I got to travel. Um, I got paid very well. You know, and yeah. I still had time to audition. And luckily, the people I work with were always um, amiable enough to let me allow me to take time off, nice. you know, do my auditions and stuff like that. So it was, I can never complain. I never complain about, you know, or bitter like, oh, I should have done. No, I, hey, I've had a great, great run. Yeah. And, you know, uh, just FYI, Prince is my favorite artists like of all time I, think I mean me yeah I probably yeah. did the most yeah. just the most talented musician the most passionate you know sensual just like he had everything dancing singing mm-hmm. like he sings the crazy high notes he does it right. all and um and you know I I actually had an opportunity when I lived in LA to to meet with him I actually oh, danced cool. with him at a club <laughs> Oh, was it um was it glam slam or vertigo or oh man i don't even want to say it makes me it ma- it's too long ago but yeah. um but yeah it, i i'm so blessed to have had that opportunity I'll, I'll be honest with you i was super young and i was really intimidated and very wow. shy and mm-hmm. i did not take advantage of the moment in any way i was more like oh my gosh you want to dance with me <laughs> like i didn't know what to do yeah. But um, but anyway, yeah, that's my that's my Prince story. So kudos to being able to do Prince. It's it's an amazing yeah. feat. Well, well, Prince always had good taste in women. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if he was too into blondes. I don't know, but yeah, uh, he was. <laughs> yeah I'm sure he was. But, but was, uh, he's my favorite too. That just to tell you, he he always has been. You know, I always um. I have a lot of admiration for Michael Jackson as a, as to me, the most electric performer I've seen, ever seen. Yeah. But as far as like my favorite, mm-hmm. I have to go towards Prince, yeah. But those are definitely my two, but I like other people too. Yeah, Prince you know? and Michael are are it. I mean, yeah. if you don't, everybody in the world knows who's, who these people are and yeah, it's, it's just so sad that we lost them so early. I know. Isn't it though? Mm, here's yeah. a here's a weird fun fact for you about Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Prince. The oh. fun fact <laughs> is they were all born within a couple of years of each other, mm-hmm. and they all landed in in the Midwest. And I find that odd. I because mm. these are the three people that really developed music today you know pop Mm -hmm. culture um 
everything. I mean, they, they, they all pushed the boundaries. They all broke all the, the records and, and they, they were all amazing, amazing icons and legends. Right. And right. they, they all landed on this planet within a couple of months of each other, within a couple of states of each other. And, and I find right. that really interesting. I always wondered yeah. about that. I Me just, too. I thought that was weird. You know? Yeah. It, it's also a, a very interesting fact that um, the American pop culture is a totally, it doesn't really get enough credit for giving these, these, versi these versatile artists out there. I mean, usually people think about music and the musical wave. They always think about the British, the old British wave, you know, and a lot of the best artists come from Britain and stuff like that. But that that argue, has validity as well. You know, but I'd argue that... Um, especially during the mid 80s, early 90s, it was a lot of American artists that are very influential in, in music history on the most, still that way. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. So um, you've got to work with some pretty amazing people, right? Um, yeah, Cody Alexander, that's one. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was one. Um, let me see who else I work with. I work with Carmen Electra. That was always fun for me. Anyway, I just, just, I just worked with her. I have a picture with her from uh, a year ago. In fact, we did uh, Hell's Kitchen, and it comes out um, next. I don't know, probably next season. Oh wow! Nice. It's the end of, end of next season where they're in Vegas. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, she's she's amazing. She, I've met her yeah. a couple of times throughout my career as well. Yeah, she's fun. And uh, I've, I've dealt, yeah, a lot of people, I've, you name it, I've, I've worked with one of my, one of my um, idols. What are we, I wouldn't call him an idol. I should, I should not say that, but I admired him because he was the first Latino to basically become a lead in a TV series and became the hottest thing on the planet when he was oh. doing Chip, Eric Estrada. Oh yeah, and and um, I, I know you have a really good story about him right now. Basically, yeah. um, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on this show is because mm -hmm. I have been seeing all these these great things about you, and and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's really you know doing some stuff and. And mm -hmm. what it is, is that you have created a TV series yes. and it's currently running on uh, Tubi, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you are the star of it. And you're also, I mean, like throughout your life, you're, you're a writer, director, producer. You, you basically have decided that in order to, to make it in this town, in that town, yep. that you, you have to do it yourself. Yeah, I control my destiny as much as I possibly can. Uh, so that was the conclusion I came to. Um, quick story, actually, I really came to that conclusion. I always wanted to do that. But I remember when I first came to LA, I got a guest starring part on, if you can remember, well, you probably do, maybe. But anyway, it was a Stephen J. Cannell production called The A-Team. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, with, with Mr. T? Mr. T, yeah, that was my Everybody very Everybody knows first. The A-Team, yeah. Yeah, my very first um, guest starring role on a TV show. My exactly. very first role, basically. I never had any before. I just came out young and green. You know, I it was on a it was on a, hol a school holiday. I came to LA and spent six months out here just really? to yeah see if I could do anything before I moved here permanently. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I went into the cafeteria, the commissary, the NBC commissary, and Michael Landon was sitting at a table all by himself. All right. And I think he was doing, I forgot, he, so many, I, I was either doing Highway to Heaven, I think it was Highway to Heaven or Little House, I, I can't remember, one uh -huh. of the two. Anyway, he was sitting down by himself, and I walked by and I just said, Mr. Landon, I just want to, you know, and he said, why don't you sit down? I'm like, oh. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> I, yeah, and I'm like, okay, this is, the, this is too bizarre to me, you know. I've yeah. only been in, I think, three weeks, and already I was sitting down at a table with 
with uh, Michael Landon. Michael Landon. So he, I basically told him what I admired most about him was that after being a star, just an actor on Bonanza and stuff, he later explained to me he wrote a couple of those episodes and actually directed a couple too. Okay. But anyway, he decided the same thing. He was not going to just be an actor. He was going to be a writer and produce his own stuff. And uh, because he was on such a hit show, NBC gave him the gave him the contract. And that's how Little House on the Prairie started. And then Highway to Heaven and went on from there. But he gave me and he said, if you if a, he told me if a little Jewish kid <laughs> could do it like me, you can definitely do it. So I always kept, I said, you know what, what I'm going to do eventually. It took me a lot longer than it took for him, but eventually now I've reached the point where I can safely say, yeah, I'm, I'm following in his footsteps. That's so amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I do these interviews, I always get these inspiring stories about, mm -hmm. you know, how people became inspired to do what they do. And uh, I would say that that's, that really, it's cool, you know, and just, just knowing that he's also passed away, it's right. like, oh, you have a little, you have an, uh, an acting angel up there guiding exactly. you maybe, who knows? No, no pun intended, highway to heaven, but. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, he was a great, I always like, always think of Michael Landon a lot, you know, he basically was one of the people beside my parents that I look at as an inspiration to me. Yeah, and you know, he, he had programming that was always on a positive note. And yeah. I really respect that because uh, we definitely need more positive in the world. And it just yeah. seems to be going the other way with, yeah. you know, social media and, and trying to be the coolest, weirdest person you can be um, yeah. instead of spreading the good, you know? But what I'm hoping is after all of this negativity, people will start wanting positivity because like everything else, yeah. it becomes a trend. Yeah. Now it's you say the who can be the weirdest, but eventually the, the pendulum has to turn back. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, you know, keeping your fingers crossed that good, good stuff will start to come back up. I like that. I like that idea. So anyway, we're gonna go back yeah, to what you were saying about yeah. Estrada. Yeah. 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 So Eric Estrada is now playing my father in this new TV series that we're doing. That's so awesome. Yeah. So that's, that is great for me. That's like, wow. I, one thing about being in this business, like you said, you get to meet people you've admired and always wanted to, to work with. And you always say, there's always a possibility. There's always a possibility that you can work with somebody who you used to watch on television when you were a kid. And uh, it's a great feeling. It's true. When, when I lived in LA, I used to walk around and, you know, you'd kind of see stars everywhere. Right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You'd be running into stars everywhere. And, and I, I remember feeling like I wasn't starstruck because I just felt like, mm -hmm. Hey, they're a human being and they exactly. do that thing for a living. And, and yeah, I'm kind of trying to, to be, I'm trying exactly. to get to their mm -hmm. level, but mm -hmm. in all reality, they're just a human being that that became successful. So I'm I could be just like them, you know. Yep, exactly. And that's something I've also learned. Um, <laughs> funny that you say star starstruck. Um, from talking to a lot of these people I've met, yeah. The one thing that that bugs them is when actors come to them on set and bug them for autographs or pictures. That's like, that's that, that they'll actually be nice to you and give it to you, mm -hmm. but they lose respect for you because you're saying that I'm better, that they're better than, you know, hmm. they're acknowledging that. And it's, it's, I've never felt, I'm just like you. I've never been starstruck because I always thought, well, I can do, I should be there too. So mm -hmm. I think, I, I think I told, uh, a friend of mine that the only two star I was ever starstruck by only one Sean Connery I met Sean Connery in Toronto and I was like that was the only one I met a lot of them but he's the only one I was got yeah I was kind of starstruck there but even then I didn't ask him for his picture or his autograph I just shook his hand and that was it 
Oh man. I mean, another one who just passed away. I know. I know. I was so sad to hear about that, man. So many people were losing this year. It's um, tragic. Yep. Yeah. It really is. So, um, so tell us about like the struggle of putting your show together or, and tell us about the, the, um, story. What's it about? Okay. Um, let me, uh, let me start there. The story is about, it's kind of has like bonanza. Uh, <laughs> there's three, three brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, three different mothers, three different um, mothers. Three different mothers. Though. Your yeah. dad must be a stud then. Go, Eric. Yeah, Eric Estrada. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's basically, um, he's a wealthy, it's a wealthy family from Venezuela. Came to Los Angeles to make his, you know, a mark. He became the DA of Los Angeles and he wrote books. He became, he's sort of like a celebrity. And his three sons, um, two of which, uh, one is from his first wife. And his youngest son is from his new wife. I was born outside of wedlock. And that is the story where I'm sort of the bastard child. Oh, cool. And I, um, his, his, his one son is a, a lawyer and his other son is a cop. But I am kind of, uh, no pun intended, the black sheep, but I become a criminal, basically. But not a, not a thug kind of criminal. I become very involved with the um with organized crime with uh, the mafia and a couple other organizations that i decide that i want to take over that mm. so it comes of course with my family i'm everything that my family is against and um it becomes a real interesting dynamics between me and my brothers and my father and everything else wow, that sounds really really good yeah, and i've seen yeah. some clips of it you look you look like a badass <laughs> no, it's, hard. it's all it's all in the wrist yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's actually really fun i am kind of the bad guy obviously but bad guys are the most fun to play definitely yeah. that because you can do anything and you don't have to worry about people saying, man, that's terrible. Oh, well, that, I'm a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're an but actor. You have to find, yeah, right. And you're an actor. And you have to find a way to make the criminal charming. You yeah. know, I remember when I was little, I used to sit in front of the TV and my dad's favorite show was Dallas. He used mm -hmm. to always watch Dallas. So I would watch it with him. And I used to look at, wonder, well, how did that, that guy, JR, he just dominates it. And he's not he's not the good guy he's the bad guy but people liked him so i sort of remembered that and i said okay if i got to be the bad guy he's going to be such a charming bad guy that people are going to like him even against their will you know uh, that's you can that's brilliant that happen, then you got you got him yeah that's brilliant i love it so Great cast. Um, I have a great director who's also my producing partner, Frank Pinnock. Mm -hmm. And uh, without his help, this thing never could have happened because that's the one thing I don't do. I haven't directed yet. I, I'm thinking about it, but he's so good. I, I'm scared to like, you know, even take, <laughs> take part in that. And then our executive producer, who is the money man, is a guy named Kareem Madison. And he and his wife, Inga, um, have a company called Knockout Productions. The um, right, the 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 ones that drove this, you know. And I walk, I work with some of my good friends like Stoney Jackson and um, do you remember, remember Todd Bridges, of course, from mm -hmm. different sports. He's on the show. Um, we have Sophia Milos from The Sopranos. She's on the show. And, wow. Uh, uh, Eric Roberts. Yeah. You know, Everybody knows who Eric Roberts is. He's on the show. And we, you know, Richard Grieco, he's on the show. So we got a lot Dang. of people that people know. That's who, awesome. Uh, like the concept. And because we're in the new stage now of how films and TV are being, you know, shown, mm -hmm. uh, we're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Wow. 
Yes. Amen. Well, um, I'll put the links to however people can get through to that, mm -hmm. to the show. I'll put those below and, you know, your website so people can follow you and, and see what you're doing and check out what's yeah. happening. Um, and uh, yeah, I just really appreciate your time. It's mm -hmm. been a very interesting interview. Uh, I love the concept of your new show. Um, it's well-deserved. You're a talented, hardworking person. And um, Thank you. Yeah. And if you ever need um, a blonde girl blonde? like me on your show, don't forget the small people. Yeah. And I, also know, I know of your talent. So yeah, I wouldn't even, you know, one thing about you, I know that you're, anybody who can do the, the things you do, I understand. It usually goes into acting and everything else. So yeah. Thank you. Know. you. I appreciate you that. Stage presence is everything. That's what I'm impressed. With. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. It's a it's a big thing. Is there anything yeah. that you want to um, tell anybody? Anything else you want to add? Oh, just um, like I said, watch the show Sangre Negra. It's on Tubi TV. Um, it's an app you can download on your phone, on your smart TV, on your computer. Mm -hmm. And the first four episodes are up. You watch all four of them and binge them. And the next four are coming up in, um, I, I would say, about a month because wow. it's a full season, eight episodes. And after that run, we're on our way, hopefully, to, well, we get meetings, hopefully, with Netflix and a couple other folks. So we'll see what happens. But yeah. Well, it sounds, sounds amazing. And follow it up. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks for your inspiration and your talent. And um, we'll look forward to seeing the shows. Okay. Thank you. All right. And next, next time I see you, I probably have a haircut, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know. I, I've got roots that need to be done, you know, et cetera. So blame it on COVID. It's all COVID's fault. Yeah. Well, it's nice to not have to worry about it for a while. You know, it's like uh, as entertainers, a lot of our lives are revolving around looks and all right, that stuff. Exactly. So exactly. it's nice to just be, you know, hey. Just chill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, take care and thanks so much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Cody. All right. Bye. Bye.